Okay, thank you for that summary. And actually, I'll ask um, Brandy just to queue up my reactor slide. So now I'm shifting hands to be um, uh, the uh, reactor to those. And actually, I just jotted down some things immediately when I saw Josh's slide. But first of all, I, I apologize for using the original uh, eMERGE Network banner. Um, it's kind of like the throwback uniforms of the NFL teams that were using their their team uh, from from the 70s. But hey, since since I actually did that logo on my desk, I'm entitled <laughs> to perseverate with it. So if you would uh, slip the uh, click the slide to the to the next one, um, the my reaction about um, the lessons learned um, re reflects that. There was um, some hope, I think, early on uh, that we could um, somehow have an all-purpose all phenotype detector machine. You would simply pour the entire EMR into it, and out would come all possible observable uh, phenotypes. Uh, I think we've uh, disabused ourselves of the uh, achievability of that um, and have, I think, gotten closer to the notion that, from a computer science standpoint, phenotypes are at least um, NP-hard. Uh, they may be NP because of this uh, combination that they represent um, the recording of attributes overlaid with business processes, overlaid with the interpretive uh, skills uh, and the documentation skills of individuals. And so it takes to disaggregate all of that complexity, it looks like it's going to continue to take human beings. So in that context, my first uh, question was, well, OK, how could uh, you expand the EMR phenotype workforce? Uh, beyond eMERGE, um, and that is what do the lessons learned say about the skills and the technology of, uh, needed for an institution that, that doesn't do it now, say your average CTSA awardee, um, and, and could eMERGE at least imagine um, creating uh, a reference document for uh, an institution that would like to be able to get in the game of both using and, and developing new uh, phenotypes, join the CKB club, if you will, um, and what would it take for them to do that? Because I think there are a lot of uh, at least CTSA organizations that would like to do that because these phenotypes have a lot of utility that extends beyond genome-phenome correlation um, to uh, all the way into clinical care processes. One of the observations early on at, uh, at Vanderbilt was that the type 2 diabetes algorithm immediately got the attention of the Diabetes Center as a way where they might be able to find people who were out there in the population and who had diabetes that was not yet diagnosed. And if one additional piece of information could be acquired, it would allow them to improve the quality and consistency of care processes. Similarly, that, that kind of re reuse utility of the, of the phenotypes is, is something that eMERGE, I think, has discovered and has general utility. And then my second bullet, so stated otherwise, what would be needed to scale up to dozens or hundreds of collaborating institutions uh, for purposes of being able to uh, remove the phenotyping bottleneck? Uh, next slide. Um, so the second uh, idea is that we have a set of uh, uh, almost stovepipe-like standalone, um, you know, it's getting up in the 60s. But uh, it has the appearance that complex phenotypes all have to be developed from scratch with domain experts. Uh, and, and can they be uh, decomposed into subunits uh, that are like modular software, where you could string them together or be able to use them uh, in a way that you could uh, build up uh, perhaps not an arbitrary uh, phenotype, but at least get pretty far down the pathway of having a high quality cohort selection logic that is built on a set of little components, little Lego blocks that uh, are uh, currently subcomponents of uh, complex eMERGE phenotypes but are not sort of called out and don't have their own ROC and their own um, kind of, they, they haven't been characterized with respect to their subcomponent information recall and precision. Um, so. This, this, I think, would have a large leveraging effect on institutions, both within the eMERGE and future partners, not having to reinvent things from scratch. Next slide. Yeah. Um, so the, this one I can jump over because it really is just the systems view of the questions that were just discussed in the discovery versus implementation. And, and that is um, one thing that informatics people don't do is they don't 
start working on stuff until somebody agrees that here's the use case we want to hit, all right? And so clarity of, of what is the, the decision support target will do very much to catalyze an awful lot of coding and exchange of information and standards for uh, heterogeneous systems. Um, and and uh, so I, I think that as this discussions have already been, been well covered. Uh, next slide, though, I think um, is, is one that uh, I, I think actually represents a communications challenge for eMERGE, because we're a very informatics savvy group and we, so did, we tend to use the, the, the lingo of clinical decision support as informatics people talk about it. And so we talk about things like rule-based systems. And it's been my observation that, um, for example, another NIH Institute director who will go unnamed is building an effort to create a rare variant uh, a disease-specific uh, database, said, well, this is not going to be a bunch of rules. And so what we're what people misunderstand is when people, informatics people talk about rules, it really is just a structured ability to recognize the condition of interest by looking at a bunch of features of it. But other people, if you use the word rule-based, will think, oh, well, that's cookbook medicine. You're going to tell doc doctors what they're doing and remove all of their, um, their latitude as professionals. And so I think it's important to recognize that intervention uh, can at least include these five, and they really go beyond that, too. So. Clinical decision support could be educational prompts, you know, the general notion of here's additional information to consider. Data gathering prompts, that is, given what we know, it would be helpful to get this additional data. Guidance that does improve the certainty of diagnosis, or, uh, given the data that's available. Uh, the pharmacogenetics, uh, one that's been emphasized uh, already, which is best evidence-based therapy selection, but also information relevant to either prevention or prognosis. And so keeping a broad view of possible implementation at systems level, I think, would serve the consortium best. And I'll stop there.